<laughs> Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel, and this is... I'm Dan Cox from Central Culture Tools. And he is the inventor of the famous ultimate roofing square, which we will be using in this video. But don't worry, you don't have to use it. What we want to show you is how to build a hipped roof. And a further feature of this roof is that we found a quiet corner of Essex to build it in, but there's no electricity. But don't worry, because we got the EcoFlow, which is a portable power unit, and it can power our chop saw, our other corded tools, it can charge our batteries and it can also make the tea. Well, it can't make the tea, but it can boil the kettle. You make the tea, don't I'll you? I'll make the tea. So first thing is we've got to find the midway point, right? So we're going to find half of the span or yeah. the run, get the centre of that, then we're going to put the thickness of our rafter on the centre, and then we can measure up here to get our other end common, yeah. king common rafter in. <laughs> That's an end common rafter. It's an end common. Also or known as a king, king rafter, common. but if you're a yeah. Republican, common, common. rafter. That's a run. It's 2425. 2425. Two, so half of that. Go on. 2425. Half of that. 12, 12. 12. 12. 12.5. 12.5. Don't forget that 0.5 of a millimetre. 12, 12.5. 12. So that is our halfway line. Yeah. That, this is the thickness of our end common king. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to put that 45 mil. So that is where our end common is going to go. Now we're going to measure from the overall up to the end common. Yeah. And that is 1190. 1190 there, end common That's king right. will go there like that. So then that forms a perfect square for our hip to go up onto. Now it's just worth pointing out at this stage that if you're putting a wall plate in as we have here, you need to make sure that it's absolutely square, parallel, level. Spend some time doing that because if you don't, it means that every rafter you cut, you've got to cut differently. If you get it square, you get it level, you get it absolutely perfect, then everything else will fall into place. Now you can see on this one that we've got OSB sheathing. If this was on brickwork, this would be on the inner wall and we'd be bedding this on the block work or whatever, and then we'd have a brick skin up the outside. But this is what we'd be working to, the outside of the wall plate. But as you can see here, we've got OSB sheathing on it because this would be like for a shed or a timber frame house. So in that case, we want our rafter to sit on the outside of that. And so we're, our overall dimension is this from the outside of there to the outside of the other side. So just make sure you get that right because this is what you're looking for. And now he's setting out 600 centers for these rafters. They could be at 400 centers. That depends on the tiles and the battens and everything else. It, or you may even be using a OSB sheathing on the roof as well, sarking board as they call it. So now we've got that square marked out for the hips. What we're gonna do is we've got to pitch the common rafters, the main bit of the roof, if you like. And to do that, we need the overall width, yeah? Level run. The run. Which is 2425. So we've got the 2425, the run. We found half of the run, and then we've put our ridge thickness on now, 45 mil. So our rafter run is 1190. So, the edge so we can the work out edge. the rafter lengths now. We've done a 30 degree pitch roof, okay. so we can work out our rafter lengths. So you might wonder how Dan got that 30 degree pitch. Well, you can have a pitch for anything sort of 22, if you like, all the way up to 45 or whatever. So it varies according to the roof. Now, if you work into a drawing, it'll be on the drawing. But if you're building a garden shed or garden room or anything like that, then you probably want to work out your own angle. So we've got a little trick of how you can do it just to check what height that ridge will come to. But you could set this out on a scale drawing just to find out that 30 degree pitch is going to suit you in terms of the height of the building. So the overall span is 2425, the ridge width 45 mil, and the roof pitch is 30 degrees. Let me hit the calculate. So our rafter length is 1374. So now we've got that magic number, we can use that to calculate the rafter length. To work length. out the rafter length. And, and that's where your square comes in. Yep, measure them out and cut them so they fit in nicely. Is it? Spot on ski. Yeah, it's just a. Once we get another raft up a pair, that'd be nice. So 
so first of all, we're going to cut this corner off so our hip is going to sit on there and it come and sit up there nicely because we need to keep our height above plate the same. This is the thickness of our hip and that's going to come out to like there. So that's where we're going to cut it off. So then our bird's mouth will go over there and all our height above plates will be uniform all the way around the roof. If this was like a brick building and we had a plate, you'd have the plate and cut it off. But because we've got the sterling ball coming all the way down here, I need to cut it down a little bit more and then come oh, okay. out. If it's a wall plate, that'd be there. And it's be brickwork down here, you just cut that off. Mm. So our height above plate, it's a little bit shallower, but it's virtually the same as that. So now that's going to sit on there just like that. Yeah. Give me 2.1. That's it. To begin to set the hip out, we need to get the height above plate so we can get the bird's mouth correct. So I'm going to plumb up from the outside edge and this will give us our height above plate, 93 mil. So that is the height of the rafter above the wall plate. So now we're going to fit the hip in here. And obviously the hip is much longer than an ordinary rafter. This is a 30 degree rafter with a bird's mouth there. And as it comes around there, the hip's traveling a lot further down to here. So it's a less of an angle because it is traveling much further. Now, another great feature of this square is when we come to do the hips, we don't have to do any calculations. We've got all the hip marks up, you see. On the inside, we've got the common rafter. So we know it was 30 degrees on the common rafter. So if we set 30 degrees on the hip, the actual true angle of it isn't 30 degrees, but it doesn't matter. This has actually done the working out for you. So now you've done that, all you need to do, place the square on the rafter, on the hip rafter, and mark up the plum cut. I prefer to use a chop saw to cut these angles on the hip, but if you haven't got a chop saw, you can clamp the square to the hip and use that as a guide for a skill saw. So I've done one display cut there and we're looking for a point for our hip to meet the two common rafters. So we've done one side, so I'm just going to square that across there like that. And now our other cut's going to come down there to create a point. So here we have a perfect point that's going to go up and meet our two common rafters. So now we're going to set the bird's mouth out for the hip. And because we said earlier, because the hip's lower, it's a different bird's mouth. So earlier we measured this height above plate, which was the height above the wall plate, was 93 mil. So now from the top of here, the top of the hip and the plumb cut, I'm going to measure down there 93 mil. So I'm going to start on 100 just to get it because we've got a bit of a round there. So that's 93 mil. So that's our height above plate there. Now we can just slide the square up still set on the 30 degrees because we're still doing the hip and then we just slide it down to that height above plate line there lock it off and now this is set up for the hip bird's mouth so now i'm going to physically measure the length of the hip now there's quite a few apps around that give you so much information it just blows your mind and also all the best will in the world if you've got a big building it might be a little bit out so it's good to get all the main rafters up and then physically measure it. I've got a fixed point here and we've got a fixed point up there. So because these big feet, if you like, this big foot on it, sometimes hard to get it in there. What I do is I go 100 mil up. We start on 100. And go from there. But of course, Dan then has to deduct that 100 mil from or, the measurement. Or just start 100 up there. 1940. Right, Roger, if you um, hold the square, I'm just going to do a very slight arc. Just okay. follow the 1940 round. So that is obviously now from the top of the common rafters down to our wall plate. And as the square is already set up, we can just slide this up until it meets that line. And now we have the bird's mouth set out on the hip. So as you can see, we've measured from the top of the hip up there down to this point here, the bird's mouth. We've not measured along the top like we would an ordinary rafter. On the hip, the bird's mouth's usually a little bit bigger because the hips are wider, so it sometimes gets nearer half the thickness. But this is okay because the hips are a bigger timber. Now, Dan, I understand this, but just for those people who might not, normally when you're doing a common rafter, common rafter one of these, yep. 
you'd be going from the top along this top edge. We do, yes. And then set the square down. When we're doing the rafters, we've got nothing set up at all. Right. So we've got to start somewhere. And the correct way is you've got to measure down the edge so it's running along the roof line. Got it. But so now these are all set up, we've got physically two fixed points to work to. Yeah, yeah. So that is why we've measured from the top to the plate, from the top, a nice little arc round and set the square on it. So just to prove a point, here's our common rafter, 30.3, and here's our hip, 22.4. I've just cut a little point on here, it's at the same pitch as the hip, 22 degrees. I'm just going to offer it up in now. So of course I could have measured to the longest point, but as you can see, if you lift it there, it's just out a little bit. So where we drop it down, by going to the shoulder line, it's just a few mil down and it's more of an accurate measurement. And now I can measure from there to the overall plate down there. Some people may be confused by this, Dan. When we measure, what we're looking for is 600 centre to centre of rafter. To center. So, so if we go that side, or so no, we go this side of the rafter, we need to go the, the other that side. side of the rafter there. That's correct. So that will then give us 600 centres. 600 centre. Right, so when you go up there. At the top. You need to do the same. We've done from this edge to so that, this edge. To that edge, right, yes. that's it. Okay, so you do that, okay. 600 centres. So when your rafter goes up, it's going that side, all right? That's correct. Because that's just one of those little things that somebody then, may flip round and then oh no i've done it wrong i've cut the rafter too short That's yeah great. and then by doing this we're going to get the longest point mm -hmm. the longest point of the rafter of the jack rafter so once this comes up here we've yeah. got a, a nice solid physical point for measuring off rather yeah. than this edge we don't want that edge oh, we okay. want the longest point yeah 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 it's got to be this um, side and, th and then is it going down to it's going to come round and bird's mouth round here like right normal. so we're doing that Okay, I so, understand. So once the jack rafter goes in, we'll be able to see it more clearly of why we've gone to the longest point. Okay, because actually if you cut this a smidgen wrong, all you'd have to do is move it slightly move it back a little down bit, yes. by two mil and it would be right and that wouldn't be the end of the world because... It's yeah. not a jack rafter. So they get, they're very forgiving really, isn't it? So they'll be measuring from that longest point on the hip to our overall and we've got 753. So I've just cut the one length in half, so we're going to get two jack rafters out of the one length with the one saw cut. And as you can see, now that was a 30 degree cut, the same as all the main roof there. I simply put the square on, clamped it down and used that as a guide. And then we put the skill saw on 45 degrees, lay it over and went through. But as you can see, when you're cutting through on that angle, it's not actually 45, it's just out a little bit. The saw compensates that whatever angle you're going through. So now we've got the splay cut on the jack rafter. It's going to go just in there. So the square that was set up from all these main rafters, this is the same bird's mouth. So now I can measure down there, 753 from the longest point, hook on. A nice little arc around there, 753. Lay the square on, slide it up to the line, draw the bird's mouth, and that is our jack rafter ready to go. So it's important to remember that a jack rafter is exactly the same as a common rafter, and nothing like the hip. So here you can see that the jack rafter is exactly the same as the common rafter. It's just going to slide in to meet the hip. Now if this hip was much longer, and these are much longer, when you fix these, you can see, we're going to fix them in pairs, because if you put them all on one side, it has a tendency to push the hip out and bow it out. So by fixing them in pairs, it straightens the hip up. When I'm working on my own, I quite often bang a nail in there, bend it over a little bit, and it just helps hold it up there for when I'm fixing the bottom. 
Now you will have noticed that Dan's screwing this whole roof up and the reason he's doing that is because this is a rig, we're going to dismantle it afterwards. Normally he would just use a Pazload nailer and nail the whole thing up. Some people worry about using screws but these are forge fast construction screws, they're made for the job and they will not snap. So those people will say don't use screws because they're brittle and they snap, not these ones. The longest point to there, 754. 754. For the longest point, just put that like that there. And then I can go 754 and do an arc there. So again, this jack rafter is exactly the same as our end common rafter there. So that's it there. All the birds math exactly the same. It just slides straight in till it meets the hip. There. So that was really great. That's how to construct a hipped roof. And of course the other side is going to be identical to this. So there's no point us going through that whole thing again. But Dan's done a really great job. Now, if you want to see more of Dan's videos, he's actually got his own playlist on Skill Builder now. He's done so many roofing videos and different things that you can watch his videos back to back all day long. And I would recommend watching as many as you can because he goes out on site, he does this job out on site with all the distractions and all the different restrictions there are. So it's a good idea to get that, you know, if you're going to learn this as an apprentice or somebody who just wants to improve, add a string to your bow, then the more you watch, the more you'll know. And I just want to mention this fact about the fact you were lucky here, Dan, with a 600 centre, yes. weren't you? Yeah. You didn't need to put a tiddler in there because no. sometimes I have to put a silly little one in there and that drives me nuts. Or say, generally, we've done all these at 600s and on the drawings, but sometimes you can reduce that. That's the maximum that you'd want. Yeah. So if this was a real roof, I would have moved that one out a little bit to say 400 yeah. and then come off that another four. So the next jack would have been here. Okay. And it'd been a decent size rather than a horrible little one at the end here that's oh, no. not doing a lot. They flop about, so don't they? Sometimes. As long as you don't always exceed the maximum, you can always reduce it. Got it. And I think that, you know, that 400 centres that people normally do with a cut roof, 16 inches for the Americans, the reason I'm seeing that not done now is because of the insulation. People are saying, take it to 600 because you get less cold bridging. Right, yes. With the, the fewer rafters you've got in, the less cold bridging you're going to get. So I think that may be one of the reasons why they've increased the dimensions of the timbers. The timbers, Because then again, it's to get more insulation in, isn't it? Yes. And also spread them out a bit. Yeah. yeah. Which just means you've got to use a thicker batten, basically, doesn't it? Yes. So we've completed that roof construction job using the EcoFlow for all of it, including making our tea. What's it doing? It's got 65% still left on it. So it's good for... Based on that, it's good for another couple of days' work, which is, to my mind, tremendous.